Hello everyone, myself Dr. Radhika Mehta, Associate Professor from Jagannath University, Jaipur. Let's start the new topic, ICT. Today, we will be discussing Unit 9 of Online Journalism subject. Let's understand ICT. The ICT system consists of the following components, cloud computing, software, hardware, transactions, communication technologies, data and internet. Information and communication technologies is used in the most of the fields such as e-commerce, e-governance, banking, agriculture, education, medicine, defense, transport, etc. With technological advances, advanced computing infrastructure, sophisticated marketing strategies and reduced cycle times with robotic process automation. ICT is playing a vital role. Information and communication technology can be used in various fields including, let's understand the first, entertainment. Information and communication technologies have impacted entertainment and leisure activities in different ways in which you spend your time. ICT offers a variety of entertainment and leisure activities and allows for quick access to movies or music that can be easily assessed and you can watch movies and listen to music directly from the internet. ICT adds more interactive technologies to TV shows. Digital cameras, printers and scanners have enabled more people to experience image production in addition to developing graphics interfaces. Next, ICT in medical science. Medical devices and modern equipment have evolved considerably favoring information and communication technology. Information and communication technologies are related to devices, resources and tools needed to improve the acquisition, retrieval, storage and use of information in health and biomedicine. That is why we find that most of the medical devices that now exist rely on information and communication technology in the way of use, detection and treatment of diseases. Health informatics tools include formal medical terms, clinical guidelines, computers and information and communication system. ICT in finance. Information and communication technology is used by daily financial companies to trade financial instruments, to report a business earnings, earnings and to keep records of personal budgets. ICT allows rapid calculation of financial data and provides financial services companies with strategic and innovative benefits as well as electronic transfer of money through the use of credit cards or e-commerce which includes the, pur the purchase and payment via the internet and others. ICT helps deal with security concerns, legal issues and access to global markets. Now, ICT in public sector management. Information and communication technology is used to facilitate more convenient government services, make the government more transparent and accountable to citizens, promote a more efficient and cost effective government. ICT provides greater public access to information and constitutes opportunities for public administration that require meeting many economic, financial, structural and legal conditions. ICT also allows 
people to perform many different activities such as paying bills or renewing official documents such as driving license and others over the internet. Now, ICT in home electronics. The use of ICT in domestic electronics is developing rapidly. ICT equipment is used to increase access to home care. ICT in education. Information and communication technology contributes a great, greatly to education because it improves the way of education and provides a better educational environment through the use of computers, tablets, data displays, interactive electronic boards and others in the process of communicating information to students. UNESCO pursues a comprehensive educational system enhanced by information and communication technology, which focuses on the main challenges in joint work, whether in the field of communications, information, science and education. Next, ICT in agriculture. Information and communication technology in agriculture helps in the growing demand for the new approaches and focuses on enhancing agricultural and rural development through better information and communication processes. ICT also helps empower rural people by providing better framing techniques, better access to natural resources, effective production strategies and digital marketing strategies for agriculture business and financial services etc. In the ICT field, you can do the following jobs. Let's take a look. The first, the manager. The position of a manager is one of the important jobs that rely heavily on information and communication technologies. Next, the developer analysis. The person who designs information system and learns how to upgrade software and how hardware works. Next, the engineer. The person who can do software work to develop and implement programs and applications. Now let's start the new topic, need for national ICT policy. Information technology is a key driver of an increasingly knowledge-based global economy. A knowledge-based economy is now a sequent non known for leadership. Given its current global position in the IT and ITES sector, India is well positioned to enhance and leverage its IT capabilities towards this end. Technology has transformational power. It is great leveler of opportunities within and across economies. Recognizing this potential of IT, several economies in the Asia Pacific region have invested in infrastructure and adopted proactive policies to foster adoption of IT persuasively. Consequently, their economies have experienced much faster and more equitable growth and their development indices have moved up rapidly. India aspires to become a knowledge economy with a global role. The Indian economy has achieved a growth rate of around 8% over the last decade and the contribution of 
IT sector to this growth is significant. The Indian IT industry is a USD 100 billion industry somewhere in 2011 to 2012 with 80% of the revenues coming from exports. The Indian IT and ITES sector employs over 2.8 million skilled people. While IT export growth is satisfactory despite global recession in the last few years, the impact of IT within the country is uneven. Despite relatively sluggish growth of the domestic market and low levels of ICT usage and penetration in the past today, there are very encouraging signs of accelerating recourse to ICTs in most sectors of the economy and society. However, the bulk of Indian IT exports is still targeted towards North America and Europe. Besides major IT hubs like Bangalore, Chennai, Hyderabad, Mumbai, Pune and NCR which account for nearly 90% of the total industry in India are near saturated and face infrastructural challenges and human resource constraints for further expansion. This necessitates the absolute imperative for Indian IT and ITS industry to diversify into Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities. Emerging technologies such as mobile technology, localization, virtualization and cloud computing provide Indian IT, ITES industry a major opportunity to become partners in valuable creation and drive transformation domestically. ICT is known to have transformed businesses and created new products and markets and improved the productivity and efficiency in other sectors. Sectors like finance, retail, courier and media are just few examples of in this context. For India, to retrain, retain its competitive edge in sectorism sectors in which it is traditionally strong like textiles as also in emerging sectors, it is imperative that ICTs are appropriately adopted. Similarly, the importance of ICTs in strategic sectors like defense, atomic energy and space etc. is paramount. Now let's understand the next topic, the national policy on IT. When we talk about the national policy of IT, it focuses on application of technology enabled approaches to overcome monumental development challenges in education, health, skill development, financial inclusion, employment generation, governance, etc. to greatly enhance efficiency across the board in the economy. The policy seeks to achieve the twin goals of bringing the full power of ICT within the reach of the whole of India and harnessing the capability and human resources of the whole of India to enable India to emerge 
as the global hub and destination for IT and ITES services by 2020. The focus of the IT policy is therefore on development of ICT in all sectors of the economy and on providing IT solutions to the world. The policy aims at attaining these objectives through coordinated actions on the part of both the central and state government emerging technology trends will make it possible for millions of citizens to access services electronically in self-service mode using mobile phones and the internet or through assisted service points such as common services and possible through Umigus network connectivity based on mobile technology, broadband internet and high technology and low cost affordable devices and software solutions which enable electronic access to services including e-payments. A unique Aadhaar based electronic authentication framework would be an integral part of systems providing services to the people. Cloud computing will significantly speed up design and rollout of services, enable social networking and participative governance and e-governance on a scale which was just not possible with traditionally technology solutions. Adoption of IT by civil society is also increasing by leaps and bounds. Rising use of social media presents a, un a unique opportunity to reach a large percentage of population in ways that were not possible earlier. Used appropriately, they could substantially enhance the democratic and governance fabric of the country. In keeping with these trends, governments at all levels in the country are aggressively adopting e-governance to improve accessibility, transparency and efficiency. Social media could also be utilized to facilitate peer-to-peer -peer interaction and thereby promote horizontal communication to foster the growth of a connected society. The national policy on IT aims to maximally leverage the power of ICT to help additional economic and development challenges the country faces. Now understand the vision to strengthen and enhance India's position as a global IT hub and to use IT and cyberspace as an engine for rapid, inclusive and substantial growth in the national economy. Whereas the mission is first to cons consolidate India's position as the global IT and ITES hub and leverage IT to contribute significantly to GDP and employment. Second, to create a substantial, sorry, to create a sustainable ecosystem for R&D and innovation to emerge as a global leader in the conception, design and development of new products, services, processes and business models. Next, to leverage ICT for enhanced 
competitiveness and productivity of key economic and strategic sectors. Next, to provide ambiguous, affordable access to information and public services for enhancing efficiency, transparency, accountability, and reliability and leverage use of ICT as a driver for social inclusion. Next, to be the leading resource base for IT and ITES talent for domestic and global mail. Next, to transform India into a knowledge society. Now let's take a look on the objectives. The first to increase revenues of IT and ITC, ITES industry from 100 billion USD to present at present to 300 billion USD by 2020 and expand exports from 69 billion USD at present to 200 billion USD by 2020. Next, to gain significant global market share in emerging technologies and services. Next, to promote innovation and R&D in cutting edge technologies and development of applications and solutions in areas like localization, local based services, mobile value added services, cloud computing, social media and utility models. Now let's take a look on the next point to encourage solutions, sorry, to encourage adoptions of ICTs in key economic and strategic sectors to improve their competitiveness and productivity. To provide fiscal benefits to SME and startups for adoption of IT in value creation. To create a pool of 10 million additions, additional skilled manpower in ICT. To make at least one individual in every household illiterate. To provide for mandatory delivery of and affordable access to all public services in electronic mode. To enhance transparency, accountability, efficiency, reliability and decentralization in government and in particular in delivery of public services. To leverage ICT for key social sector initiatives like education, health, rural development, financial services to promote equity and quality. Next, to make India global hub for development of language technologies to encourage and facilitate development of consent accessible to all Indian languages and thereby help bridge the digital divide. To enable access of content and ICT applications by differently abled people to foster inclusive development. To leverage ICT for expanding the workforce and enabling lifelong learning to strengthen the regulatory and security framework for ensuring a secure and legal complaint cyberspace ecosystem, to adopt open standards and promote open source and open technologies. Now, let's understand the strategies. Creating an ecosystem for a globally competitive IT and ITES industry. First, to make requisite policy changes 
to make India a preferred destination to establish and operate IT, ITES enterprises including a stable tax regime and strengthening of the enable infrastructure. Next, to formulate fiscal and other policies to attract investment in IT industry in tier 2 and tier, tier 3 cities and rural areas for expanding the base of IT and for creating employment opportunities across the country. Next, to promote ICT companies in assessing new markets through bilateral agreements, enhancing smooth trade and facilitating mobility for skilled workforce and creating awareness. To formulate policies to provide fiscal benefits to SMEs and startups. To evolve sector specific strategies in areas like engineering, health, education, skill development, security, legal, financial, accounting, etc. with the ministries and representative sector bodies concerned to create, open up the remote services market in new field services and to enhance value addition in existing services. Next, to evolve a new region market specific strategies with the ministries and industry bodies concerned in order to enter expand new markets to integrate indian it products services and expertise in indian foreign aid programs now let's understand human resource development to create necessary physical and institutional infrastructure for creating a pool of 10 million trained persons in IT sector by the year 2020 through formal and non-formal sectors with focus on skill development and expertise creation to set up centers of excellence in institutes of higher learning to promote high-end research in specialized ICT areas and producing quality doctoral and postdoctoral level researchers to create a mechanism to ensure that at least one individual in every household is e-literate to create a framework to certify the level of applied knowledge and skills of personnel in specific areas of ICT to catalyze continuous updating of curriculum and syllabi at all levels to include the current developments and relevant knowledge of ICT as an integral part of educational programs and to promotion of innovation and R&D in IT sector. To support SMEs and startup companies to equip them for competitive environment and innovation funds and incubation facilities to create an innovation challenge agenda to promote innovation in ICT sector, to build R&D infrastructure and test facilities for development and adoption of emerging technologies like next generation computing system, high performance computing, cloud computing, JIS, mobile technologies. 
interoperable infrastructure for small financial transactions, switch, language technologies, etc. To promote industry academia collaborative R&D with emphasis on innovations, products, patents and IPs. To encourage adoption of ICT based green technologies as well as to promote green technologies by making them competitive through appropriate fiscal and non-fiscal policies to strengthen the ecosystem for creation as well as protection of intellectual property. Now let's understand the next topic, enhancing productivity and competitiveness in key sectors through ICT. To leverage ICT, including mobile technology, to enable outreach of secure and interoperable financial and banking services in remote areas at affordable cost, to enable long-term partnership with industry for to promote use of IT in key economic sectors such as construction, technologies, textiles, banking, finance, retail, energy, automobiles, healthcare, education, agriculture, transport and logistics for improved efficiency and productivity to promote the availability and use of public key infrastructure, payment getaways and authentication system leveraging Aadhaar. Now creating an ecosystem for internet and mobile driven service industry to leverage internet and web technologies for developing new product technologies and businesses enabling seamless secure and personalized delivery of government and non-government services through internet based and mobile based delivery of services throughout the country fostering an ecosystem for innovation in services by leveraging aadhaar as well as financial and location based services next to leverage mobile services as instrument for enabling secure transactional services including financial services that's all for today thank you everyone